Good morning, everyone. So glad you're with us here. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Irampour. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday morning. We want to get right to our top story here. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it has resulted in the worst refugee crisis in Europe since World War II, and it is now reaching our border. Right now, more than 1,000 Ukrainian refugees are in Tijuana hoping to seek asylum in the U.S. CBS 8's Chris Grove, live in San Isidro with a closer look at the situation there. Chris? And they are thousands of miles away from home in an influx of Ukrainian refugees growing an already growing list of refugees in the city of Tijuana again just across our border and those Ukrainian refugees along with the other refugees from another uh, uh, other countries sleep in tents and on the streets there women and children from Ukraine wait in line as volunteers serve them food and then eventually a number and we're going to break down the process of what exactly is happening in terms of getting them across the border that number that they're handed determines who's next in line to present present themselves to U.S. border agents now unlike like those other refugees from mostly Latin American countries, the Ukrainian refugees are being allowed into the United States under a temporary humanitarian parole. A COVID policy known as Title 42 has presented, uh, prevented most other asylum seekers from entering the U.S. for the past two years, but because of that parole, it does not apply to those Ukrainian refugees. As long as they can prove they are Ukrainian, they are being allowed straight through, but it's not until their number is called, and that's where volunteers really step in because it's their their work both on our side of the border and across the border that helps things stay organized and also results in some of those refugees being reunited with their family members here in the U.S. We went last night, we bought bubbles and rocks for painting um, and uh, we're doing chalk and there's going to be uh, another volunteer that's bringing a projector for a movie night tonight for the kids to bring some sort of normalcy. God bless Ukraine, God bless Mexico, and God bless America. He's very, very happy that he is here on this land and, you know, can be united with his family. And we're told by some of the volunteers that we've been working with and speaking with that the wait time right now to get from Tijuana to the U.S. is about two days waiting for your number to get called. And again, they're working with agencies here in the U.S. to help them reunite with family members like you just saw, but then also even sometimes sponsor families who will take in these refugees during the process in which they are seeking asylum. Now, we will be hearing from some of those refugees staying in Tijuana in just about a half hour's time here on CBS 8. Eric and Netta. Chris, thank you for that. Let's get to the latest on the war in Ukraine today. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky will address the United Nations Security Council for the first time. His remarks come amid evidence of civilian deaths in northern Ukrainian towns seized back from Russian forces. But Russian officials claim the scenes in the city of Bucha were staged as an anti-Russian provocation. President Biden has called for a war crimes trial against Russian President Vladimir Putin. And new this morning, one person is dead after this crash in Mission Bay. Police say a woman was trying to walk across West Mission Bay Drive. It was about 10 o'clock last night, obviously very dark. One car swerved and missed the woman, but a second car hit her before that car then flipped over. So the woman who was walking died. The driver who hit that person, a 17-year-old girl, she was in that white vehicle that flipped onto its roof. She was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. The community in Sacramento honoring the six people killed and the dozen other people who were hurt in Sunday morning's mass shooting. A vigil was held last night, as you see. All six, six victims have now been identified. One person has been arrested in connection to that shooting. 26-year-old Dondre Martin is in police custody right now, but authorities say multiple shooters were involved. Police are still looking for the other suspects. And in the aftermath of that shooting today, Democratic state lawmakers, they will outline several proposed bills aimed at curbing gun violence. Officials will discuss gun reform bills, including one that would allow private citizens to sue gun makers. It's modeled after an anti-abortion law in Texas. Well, polls open in just one hour in the special election for the 80th Assembly District. The special election is for voters in Chula Vista, National City, and South San Diego. CBSA's Dana Marie McNichol is live outside Southwestern College. And Dana Marie, that's one of the places folks can uh, cast their ballot today. 
Yes, good morning, Eric and Netta. This is just one of nine voting centers that will be opening up around 7 a.m. this morning. So voters can cast their vote to replace Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez and that term that lasts until December. So there are three, three different candidates vying for her position, and I'm going to share some information about each one of them. But there is so much more information and a full interview on CBSA.com that you can catch up on if you are still undecided. Now, first, we we have Democrat David Alvarez. He's a small business owner and a former council member. He grew up in Barrio Logan and attended San Diego State University. He says Sacramento politicians are out of touch with problems families face every single day, and he'll confront our biggest problems head on. Then Democrat Georgette Gomez was a council member from 16 to 2020. The environmental advocate and businesswoman is also from the Barrio Logan and an Aztec grad. She's endorsed by Gonzalez and San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria, among others in the Democratic Party. Gomez's priorities include expanding affordable housing, reducing homelessness, as well as expanding access to quality child care for working families. And lastly, Republican Lincoln Pickard is a retired contractor who has an admitted he is running as an underdog in the heavily Democratic district. He's running for the 80th district seat four times before. His campaign focuses on lowering the cost of gas, water, forest management, also repealing COVID-19 restrictions and enforcing border security. Now, voting centers include Southwestern College, Camacho Recreation Center, South Crest Recreation Center and Montgomery High School. So again, nine voting centers are slated to open. Now, if you're unsure, if you live in the district and can vote, you can go to sdvote.com. We'll have that link as well on cbsa.com. Full interviews with each candidate if you are undecided. Uh, it's a good resource to check back on our website this morning before you head to the polls. I'm Dana Marie McNichol, live in Chula Vista. I'll send it back to you. Henry, thank you. It looks like grocery workers will not have to walk off the job. Their union has reached a tentative deal with Albertsons, Vons, Pavilions, and Ralphs. Now, this means the potential strike for those workers that voted in favor of will likely not happen. Employees have to review and vote to approve the tentative deal, and that will officially end contract negotiations. So we'll keep you posted on that. We are also working for you to get answers on a new street design here in Mira Mesa. This is it here. This morning, an official with the City of San Diego's Transportation Division is apologizing after getting a lot of complaints. So here's what happened. They changed Gold Coast Drive into one lane for cars, but it's a two-way street. Drivers are asked to yield and go behind cyclists if they need to move into the edge lanes. It's supposed to be safer for bicyclists, but some of them aren't happy about this. It's freaking asinine! Ridiculous! You know, with distracted drivers, now you've got people that have to drive head on towards each other in cars. They have to play bumper cars at the last minute to get away. This is utter lunacy. Yeah, you can see where the confusion is coming from here, right? San Diego's director of transportation says all similar bike lane projects are now being put on hold. And most people we are hearing from, they are not happy with the change. Mike writes on Facebook, probably the worst idea in all of human history. Incoming head-on collisions because I was avoiding the biker. We did see a few comments, though, similar to uh, Jane here. She writes, so basically drive down it like any narrow street in SD. Move over when a car comes towards you. So we continue to work for you and track updates on this traffic project, and we will uh, be providing your feedback here. Now, we'll send it over to you now. Yeah, one moment I saw the two cars coming head on. Yeah. That does seem a little scary. Mm -hmm. They have to be very, very much paying attention. Obviously, all drivers should when you're heading out the road. I wish everyone was. Uh, here's our view right now. As we look at our sunrise, that's still, you know, 20 minutes away from coming, but we can see that early morning glow. Here's our sunrise time. 631, sunset, 712. You'll get a peek at both, it looks like, because we are going to have some fairly clear conditions. What's going on this morning, though, in some areas, a haze that's kind of Coding San Diego from Oceanside. Your visibility is not too low. Four to five miles there. Ramona 1.7. Otai, it's improving a bit now. Three mile visibility. So you don't see that crisp, clear view as we typically would on, you know, these clear mornings. But for now, that haze is hanging on. 54 degrees downtown. Winds are calm. We're going to start to see the winds really kick up Wednesday and Thursday. Here's your warning right now. Things are cool for now. We are going to heat up, though. 49 in Poway, 43 in Ramona, 53 
53 right now in El Cajon, 53 in Chula Vista. So should be a fairly comfortable day to go out for a safe bike ride. Our 24 hour temperature change. You see that big drop in temperatures. We don't have that marine layer blanketing us this morning. So temperatures did take a little tumble overnight, but they're on their way up. Look at that by noon, upper 60s sunshine across San Diego today, 72 by two o'clock. So that's our afternoon high. The peak will be 72 for downtown San Diego and then mid to upper 70s for places like Vista Escondido Poway, 80 degrees expected for El Cajon. You ready for that heat? Uh, because today will be a warm one, but tomorrow 90s heat advisory starts tomorrow 11 a.m. until Friday at 6 p.m. So we're going to see a prolonged heat wave three to four days of temperatures in the 90s for much of San Diego. Let's get to traffic real quick and show you what's happening. I can uh, Glad, I'm glad to say not noticing any major incidents. A lot of the South Bay are looking smooth, no slowdowns, and then downtown's looking okay. One incident just popped up here in Escondido. It looks like there's a stalled vehicle near the 15th. So I'll work to get information on that to let you know if it'll slow you down at all. But usually those are pretty quick to clear. Eric, I'll send it back to you.